Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MTGO Traders. My name is Taryn, and this is Red Green Monsters for Rotation Proof uh, Core Set 2019 Standard. So going along with more rotation proof deck lists, this is Red Green Monsters, a deck list that I feel like is gonna be quite good once rotation happens. We're losing a lot of the aggro stuff uh, and some control pieces once rotation does happen. Uh, but Red Green Monsters basically loses nothing and has everything to gain once rotation does occur. Uh, so let's jump right into the deck list and see what we're working with. Starting with our creatures, of course, we've got 27 in total. This is a creature heavy deck, almost mono green, uh, but with some red hair for nice flair. Lanamore Elves, Drover of the Mighty, Steel Leaf Champion, and Ripjaw Raptor. We definitely need some mana acceleration, and Lanamore Elves and Drover of the Mighty are here for us, but we also have a lot of dinosaurs in the list as well, and Drover of the Mighty can turn into a 3-3 attacking in on turn three if we need to as well. So super good for that. Um, Steel Leaf Champion, Ripjaw Raptor are great. Uh, through turn three or turn two and turn three uh, hits if we have Lenore Elves on turn one. Um, really good for us. Drawing us a card with Ripjaw Raptor and getting in a ton of damage with Steel Leaf Champion. Basically getting in free damage in the early game if you're up against an opponent with only power two or less creatures on the battlefield. So lots of Really powerful stuff there. Let's move up to the uh, top curve here. We've got Gigantosaurus, a complete four of. This is why it's almost kind of a mono green list. Registrar Alpha, basically giving our dinosaurs haste. Carnage Tyrant for that good old uh, control matchup, as well as dealing with any kind of spot removal. And then Galta Primal Hunger to basically be a win more mechanic um, in the mid to late game. Galta can come down like on turn four or five, and it's kind of insane, especially if you get a Gigantosaurus out on turn three, um, because that can happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's honestly insane. Uh, so Galta coming out on turn four is ridiculous. Um, can definitely win the game by itself. A trampler for 12-12 damage. Um, just ridiculous. Of course, it is a card that you might board out uh, in game two because it can just be a card that uh, does nothing in your hand if you have no battlefield uh, to play anything out on. Uh, Registered Alpha is great for us because it's a 4-4 that gives a dinosaur's haste, but also creating a 3-3. And Gigantosaurus, while only being a 10-10, um, it's still a 10-10. So it's going to be, um, be, you know, destroying whatever blocks it, uh, which is very, very nice. And Connor's Tyrant, of course, Treble Hexproof, 7-6, can't go wrong there. Let's move on to our spells here real quick. We've got Banefire and Commune with Dinosaurs. So I added Banefire into this list because, again, we have a lot of mana accelerators in the list. And Banefire can be just a great game ender uh, in the mid to late game against a control deck or against a more grindy matchup for us if we're kind of gunned up on the board state. Um, Banefire, again, is an X and red sorcery. It deals X damage to any target. And if X is five or more, this spell can't be countered and the damage can't be prevented. So Banefire is basically here to handle those control decks if they're down to like five or six we get to tap out for like eight or nine and then bane fire them to death and that's a good gg commune with dinosaurs is here for us to get a land early in the game if we don't hit our land or elf or drove with a mighty in our opening hand or to get a dinosaur in the mid to late game if we need gigantosaurus or galta to kind of finish up uh, what's on the board state so good stuff here for our spells let's move on to our enchantment which is of course the sarkin's unsealing a four mana enchantment so complete four of here so full play set whenever you cast a creature spell with power four five or six sarkin's unsealing deals four damage to any target that includes face that includes creature that includes planeswalker any target it's insane this card is super good especially getting out getting it out on a turn three with a land war elf uh, whenever you cast a creature spell with power seven or greater sarkin's unsealing deals four damage to each opponent and each creature and planeswalker they control so basically being a, a board wipe uh, ability as well and if you notice we have a lot of stuff that has seven power or more in our deck list and sarkin's unsealing is just amazing tech against a lot of the decks right now, especially red, black aggro, and uh, surprisingly really good against uh, the control decks because again, it's whenever we cast it, not when it hits the battlefield. So we cast something like uh, Carnage Tyrants or cast something like Gigantosaurus, they may counter the Gigantosaurus, but they can't counter that four to the face, four to the field, and four to their Teferi Planeswalker. Sarkin's Unsealing is just ridiculously powerful in that way. Moving on to lands really quickly, we've got 23 in total, 12 Forest, 3 Mountain, 4 Rootbound Crag, and 4 Timber Gorge. Um, kind of thought about throwing out the Timber Gorge and putting in just uh, 4 more Mountain, but I really do like the tap land here. Even if we get this in the opening hand, I still think Timber Gorge is quite good, uh, being a good tap land on turn 2. If we just hit Land of Elves on turn 1, we're still fine. We're still ahead in the game as far as man mana goes. Um, so 
so I think it's fine in the deck list. Again, this is rotation proof. We probably will get a red green land once uh, Ravnica block kind of hits. Uh, but for now, this is what we're working with, uh, and that's it. But that's the full 60, the game one game plan. Basically going to overwhelm our opponent with board state uh, dominance. Use Sarkins and Ceiling to shoot away any kind of Planeswalker or threat in the way, and just get in for GG. Super simple and straightforward, but incredibly powerful. Let's go to the sideboard here and see what we can do against control, aggro, that kind of stuff. A uh, sideboard here is Detection Tower, more Banefire, Death Gorge Scavenger, Fiery Cannonade. Again, remember, this is rotation proof, so Fiery Cannonade is basically the only sweeper card we actually get in red right now. A three minute instant deals two damage to each non pirate creature. Uh, Pretty good against the tribal decks right now, against vampires, against knights especially, and uh, very, very good at being able to trigger Enrage for our Riptar Raptor if we have one on the battlefield. Death Gorge Scavenger is here to shut down God for his gift right now, uh, but for the future, probably shutting down some future uh, Graveyard Recursion strategy, probably a Golgari Guild uh, from Ravnica. Banefire coming in again for the uh, more control matchup, and Detection Tower is here if we really need to get around some spot removal, like with Banefire. Uh, for uh, our opponent. Do keep in mind that uh, if we do have Sarkins on ceiling and we try to target like a Hexproof creature or Hexproof anything on their side of the field, uh, it's not going to work. So Detection Tower is a good way to kind of get around that for just one mana. Uh, and we can definitely sort these out uh, from the Timber Gorges putting in Detection Tower. Uh, and the rest of the sideboard here, we have Thrashing Grotted on Vine Mare and Demanding Dragon. This card is ridiculous. A five mana five five flyer. When it enters a battlefield, it deals five damage to target opponent unless that player sacrifices a creature. And if you're playing control, you're basically just taking five to the face uh, if it hits the battlefield. That hurts. That's basically 10 damage by the next turn. Demanding Dragon is super demanding, <laughs> for real. And uh, Vimeir is here for, again, a good spot removal matchup as well. And uh, being really good against a black creature deck as well. So the mono black aggro that's kind of going around right now, the Vimeir can definitely deal with that. Thrashing Brontodon as well, coming in, dealing with God for his gift. Any kind of a Search for Ascanta situation, cast out, seal away, that kind of stuff. Thrashing Brontodon is what you want to bring in uh, from the sideboard into the main board. And of course, it is a dinosaur as well, giving Drover of the Mighty plus two, plus two. But that is the full 75, folks. Let's go to the actual layout here. The full deck list, if you want to build this on MTGO Traders, it's coming to you about 55 tickets, which is not bad at all. And if you want to build this in paper, it's coming to you about 155 bucks. The most expensive cards, of course, are being uh, Galta, Demanding Dragon, and uh, I believe there's a few uh, p tickets right now for um, Sarkin's Unsealing kind of ticking up there a little bit, and Steely Champion is a few bucks as well. But that is the full deck list, guys. Let's get to the matches and see what we can do with this deck list. Spoiler alert, uh, we face up against a lot of control decks and just demolish them, <laughs> and it's so good. All right, guys, let's get into the matches here. Again, did some sweet art for Green Red Monsters. Love the Sarkin art there. Uh, have a decent opening hand with three lands. Always a good keep. Drawing into our fourth land here and uh, going up against looks like a control list. Going for Commune with Dinosaurs, grabbing another land. Drover of the Mighty can tap for any mana of any color, but the issue is uh, we might see some early game removals, so I want to get into that mountain as quickly as possible. Gigantosaurus can be a fantastic uh, turn for play for us. Getting into Drover on the battlefield. Opponent is on Grixis control here, as they signify with a Magna Spray directly to the Drover. Keep in mind that is a card that's rotating uh, once uh, rotation happens in October. Going for a, another tap land. Going for another Drover of the Mighty here for us, and got into a Galta off the top as well. So lots of good stuff. They have an essence scatter for the Drover. That's perfectly fine. One of the best things against the control matchup here is that we just have a ton of value creatures. So they have to basically counter every single one of them for them to have a chance at winning. Gigantosaurus into a Galta is ridiculous. Getting into another Gigantosaurus, not going to complain at all. Um, so going for a Gigantosaurus tap here, but they have an essence scatter for that. Again, we're just kind of running the uh, counters out of their hand. Four cards in hand, drawing into their fifth now. Laying another land, four cards in hand now, and passing turn. We're going to go for a Gigantosaurus before we play a land, and um, they actually go for a Syncopate here. Now, they could have gone for um, a little bit more on the Syncopate, but they just go for three here, where you have to pay two. If we had another land there, we could have paid that, but again, they have two other lands in hand, so you don't really got to worry about that. We're just going to swing with Drover and pass. Losing two Gigantosauruses from that, a little annoying, but again, Galta in our hand is perfectly fine. Going for a tap land, opponent is going out with their Nicol Bolas, the Ravager. We discard our land here and draw into Registor Alpha, and just like that, we're back on top. Opponent has two lands available. We're going to go for the Galta here, and Hasty Galta getting in for 15 points of damage on turn 7. They block the 3-3 Trampler, taking 12, going down to 6. And opponent has three cards in hand here, so they really need to get into a removal spell. I'm assuming a Vrassus Contempt is in their hand, uh, so they're going to go directly Vrassus Contempt onto the Galta. Not bad, not bad. Ripjaw Raptor as well off the top here. Again, all of our creatures are value creatures, so we're tweaking in here for eight. Doing them, doing another point of damage. Nicobolus dying, putting them down to four. 
Ripjaw Raptor is a great card for us because if they did block the Ripjaw Raptor, it would have survived and we would have drawn a card. So, Scarab God for them. Sarkin's Unsealing for us. We get this out. The best thing about this is we attack him with Ripjaw Raptor and draw a card and then uh, get Gigantosaurus from that. So, super good there. Um, they could have gone with a uh, activation here with the Nicol Bolas when entering the battlefield, but they didn't go for it just then. They go for Search for Ascanta instead, and then on our draw step, they go for Nico Bolas here to try and limit our options, but it's kind of too late here. We're going to go Register Alpha Discard and just cast Gigantosaurus, thanks to Sarkin Unsealing, dealing four damage to their face immediately on cast. Now that's going to do for game one. Let's go ahead and get into game two here. Taking out the Ripjaw Raptor, bringing in Vinemare because it's Hexproof, and uh, bringing in Banefire. This is where I kind of start to experiment a little bit, kind of thinking about maybe I should take out Banefire and put in Demanding Dragon instead. There's a lot of good options for us against the uh, Control Match. Up. So let's bring in Demanding Dragon because it's just a great card against control. Uh, bringing in Demanding Dragon, taking out one Sarkin's Unsealing and one Commune with Dinosaurs, go, taking us back down to 60. Let's get into game two and see what we can do. Again, the, the control matchup is really difficult for us, but as you can see, your opening hand is just stacked with loaded creatures uh, and great threats. So great, great opening hand, we're going to go with the keep here. Go ahead, tap to Timber Gorge since we don't have a Lenore Elf to play on turn one. And um, they're going to go with Argos Bloodfast. We play out a land and go Drover of the Mighty. Now, Drover isn't going to get the pump from the Steel Leaf Champion, but a turn three Steel Leaf Champion is really good. Five cards in hand for an opponent. I'm assuming this is going to get countered, so we're running it out there for uh, counters to kind of hit it. And uh, definitely does get disallowed. We get in for one here. No big deal. Uh, Carnage Tarn being in our hand does mean that we have a great uh, removal spell for them. So as long as they don't have good, like, hand hate... Uh, going for another Steel Leaf Champion here. Could have gone with a Demanding Dragon, but kind of wanted to fetch out another uh, counter magic spell card from their hand. Uh, getting in for one, they go with a cycle there. Actually, a draw here from the Argos Bloodfast. So we actually do three points of damage, technically. And then another Argos Bloodfast draw for them as well. Seven cards in hand. Lots of removal in their hand, I'm sure. Uh, so Carnage Tarrant or Demanding Dragon are really good options here for us. Carnage Tarrant a bit more in this situation, uh, but we, we'll see what we can do. On our draw step here. They go Fatal Push on the Drover, so not too bad. Let's go for the Demanding Dragon and see if we can get that out. We do get it out. Drop them down to five and hit in for five once more. Down to four. And uh, yeah, just, just insane value for Demanding Dragon. We have ten points of damage on the board. They have six cards in hand. They need a removal spell in order to last the turn. Do they have it? Five cards in hand. They might. Let's see here. Banefire again in the opening hand as well. Or in our in our hand right now as well can be uncountered, and um, let's see what they go. They go our devastation, a nice board sweeper, but we have Banefire in our hand, and that is it. I'm gonna do five points of damage, ending the match. Can't be countered. That's game GG. <laughs> Very nice. Let's get on to match two here and see what we can do uh, against the deck in match two. Love the control matchup. I feel like we're really strong in that matchup with a lot of the stuff in our in our opening hands uh, and in our deck and our sideboard. So. Good opening hand here. We have uh, two lands instead of three, but Land War Elves is a nice keep. Uh, so we go Timber Grove or Gorge in past turn. Could have gone a Rebound Crag, but either way they came in tapped. So we're going to go with a Rebound Crag, then Land War Elf. So we're kind of behind a turn with our tap lands here. Uh, opponent's going to go with a Fatal Push on Land War Elf, to be expected. They want to slow us down a little bit. We get into our third land and then just immediately go for either Steel Leaf Champion or Land War Elf. Uh, gonna go Lanor Elf and Drover the Mighty, trying to make sure we have some good uh, ramp on the battlefield. Another fatal push to the Drover here. Again, they want to target the Drover instead because of the uh, dinosaur pump here. Uh, Steel Leaf Champion or uh, going into a Ripdraw Raptor. We decide to go Steel Leaf Champion, but again, opponent is on Esper Controls. We uh, get disallowed there, go commune with dinosaurs. We can grab a Gigantosaurus or a land. We go with land instead and pass turn. We're making sure to prioritize land just in case that they have a another removal spell or a for the Atlanta War Elf. We go register Alpha here, and they, uh, again, get out another disallow from their hand. All we're doing is just kind of making their hand smaller and smaller so cards like Steel Leaf Champion and Ripjaw Raptor can get through. Fifth land for them. We have Gigantosaurus on the battlefield if we can get it, uh, or Ripjaw Raptor instead. Go Ripjaw Raptor and uh, go for Atlanta with Atlanta War Elf and just pass turn. Opponent's going to go for a Vrasis Contempt on the uh, Ripjaw Raptor. No problem. We're going to go Sarkin's Unsealing here to see if it hits the battlefield. Three cards in their hand. They may have a Counterspell. They do not. And we hit in for one here, leaving uh, one Elf open just in case they had a Settle the Wreckage. So they go Glimmer of Genius on our instep. So the best thing about Sarkin's Unsealing is if they do have Settle the Wreckage, Sarkin's Unsealing can still do damage to our opponent without us really attacking in it at all. Teferi for four here, plusing to one, drawing a card and untapping some lands. They really need to get a uh, 
a counter spell for the Gigantosaurus, but it doesn't matter because Sarkin's Unsealing does four points of damage regardless, even if they do counter the Gigantosaurus, which they do, but does take Teferi down to one, meaning that uh, Lennon Ralph can still kill Teferi there. So a ton of damage across the board. Another Teferi coming in here because they have it. And um, we have another great creature, Stilly Champion, in our hand as well. So we're going to go for that if we can and uh, see if it gets countered again. We're just going to go direct damage to Teferi and then commune with Dinosaurs and then uh, grab either Galta or Ripjaw Raptor. Galta's win more. Ripjaw Raptor's a little safe. Um, we try to go for... Uh, Let's see what we're going to go for. Yeah, Ripjaw Raptor there. And then attack in on Teferi. We uh, should have attacked him with probably two there, just to try and work around a seal away, but opponent didn't have it either way. They're going to go instep Vrasus Contempt. They do like kind of opt to lose Teferi there to a 1-1, which is strange. Then Fatal Push on the um, Seal Leaf Champion. And then uh, Sarkin's Unsealing off the top for us. Actually, not off, off the top. It's just going to be another card that uh, opponent's got a Glimmer of Genius trying to uh, kind of uh, counter it. Again, two Sarkin's Unsealing is just backbreaking. So if we get Riptile Raptor out on the battlefield or cast it, it does eight points of damage to their face or to any target on their side of the field. Uh, we've made our way through two Teferis. I feel like we can probably make our way through the rest of this match. <laughs> so doing lots of good damage against our opponent. Four cards in hand, drawing into a Scavenger Grounds. Galta off the top here. Let's do Sarkin to the face twice. They have a counter, I believe, for Ripjaw Raptor. But that still doesn't mean we can do eight points of damage. And opponent scoops it up. <laughs> nice. Bringing in Banefire, taking out uh, the Ripjaw Raptor, bringing in Vine Mare. Thinking about that Demanding Dragon over the Galta, perhaps. But we actually put Demanding Dragon over Registrar Alpha here. Uh, just the, uh, again, against the control matchup, Demanding Dragon super good if they do not have uh, control magic for it because it just does five points of damage to its face and they have to answer it with a Brass's uh, Contempt. If they don't have Brass's Contempt, then it's basically GG doing 10 points of damage across two turns. So going to hopefully uh, see if we can get into a good matchup in the next round here. Uh, let's see what we can do. Let's see what our opening hand is here. Uh, pretty okay. Has a lot of good stuff in it. So we're going to go with the keep here. Tap land for opponent, gonna go with Llanowar Elf, and uh, hope for maybe a Sarkin's Unsealing or something like that. Uh, gonna go for a Rootbound Crag, could have gone with a Timber Gorge there, probably a bit of a misstep there for me as far as land playing. Uh, third land, they're on the Resper game plan, going Fatal Push on the Llanowar Elf. We're gonna go Timber Gorge, since we did miss that, that play last turn. Um, lots of big stuff in our hand right now, so we kind of have to wait, but that's totally fine against the control list, because again, we just have value creature after value creature. Gonna go probably for the Steel Leaf Champion if we can the following turn, or maybe just wait for a Carnage Tyrant. Either way, we have lots of good stuff on the uh, in the hand here. Search for Ascanta off the top. Gonna go Carnage Tyrant out of our hand. Can't be countered, so it does hit the battlefield. And uh, we see a Glimmer of Genius from them. Three cards in hand. They had a lot of land in their hand there. They played a land every turn, I believe. And then a Carnage Tyrant for the follow-up here, or Sarkin's Unsealing. Either way, we have lots of good stuff, lots of good options. Gonna go Sarkin's Unsealing, trying to get out a Counterspell before we attack with a Carnage Tyrant. And see in a gate there, no big deal. And then attack in for seven, thinking that may they may have a uh, Settle the Wreckage. They do Settle the Wreckage for one creature, which is to be expected, and we pass the turn. Again, we're kind of racking up a lot of lands here, so Banefire is gonna be a huge uh, boon for us as well. Getting out another Carnage Tyrant and passing the turn. Um, could go for Galta the following turn if you want to. So lots of options again for us. Gonna go uh, Galta and Gigantosaurus, or uh, Gigantosaurus into Galta. Um, just a lot of good options. Opponent tapping here for, I believe, a Fumigate, killing that Carnage Tyrant. Um, so we're tapping out here for uh, Gigantosaurus, and then we can go for a Galta right after that if we want to. Three cards in hand. Opponent kind of thinking about whether they want to counter this or not, and they decide to, let's see. Thinking about it, are they going to bluff? Are they not going to bluff? Oh, I think that's the counter. Disallow. Go for Steel Leaf Champion instead, and to have a nice attacker. So this still does mean that Galta can come out pretty unabated the next turn if they have uh, no counters for it. So we're going to try for it if we can. Tapping seven lands, going for a Galta. Waiting on our opponent once again. Doing this pre-combat to make sure that uh, it kind of lowers the statistics of a Settle of the Wreckage hitting uh, our Steel Leaf Champion here. Going for a Ascanta here, searching for a card, and they, they find a Negate here, so Banefire is a card that, uh, again, we can't really be worried about, or we, we aren't really worried about Negate for Banefire, because Banefire can't be countered after we pay uh, 5x or more. Fumigate, found that off the top, and they you go know, for a Fumigate, of course. Rootbound Crag off the top for us. And we're kind of in a holding pattern here. We have tons of land on the battlefield. If you notice, we have 11 land. They have 7 life. Or 17 life. We have 11 land. Gonna go Sarkin's Unsealing. That negate definitely hits that for sure. 
and uh, four cards in hand. They're trying to hunt for their, I'm assuming their game ender here. Uh, Chromium hitting the battlefield. No big deal. And uh, Psychic Corrosion. So this deck is an Esper kind of mill strategy. So we're going to go Banefire directly to the face for 10 and uh, just take them down to seven here, which uh, can't be countered. Ridiculous. And if we hit another Banefire off the top, which is basically what we're hoping for, um, we actually win the match here. We actually look at our sideboard and say, okay, we have a two more Banefire in the deck. Can we top deck it? They mill us for two. They hit us for seven. What do we hit? Commune with dinosaurs. Interesting. Okay. So we actually don't hit anything and go with a concede there. So, so close on the Banefire top deck there. Would have been amazing if we got it, uh, but did not, sadly. Um, so we're looking at the sideboard here, seeing if we want to bring anything in. Thrashing Brontodon kind of comes to mind for that search for Ascanta. That could be a good card. Um, Detection Tower could be good against the Chromium if we want to worry about that as well. Um, but I feel like we're probably fine. We just kind of uh, got outpaced by the opponent here. So we're just going to go with a submit and see what we can do in game three. Uh, lots of good stuff for our opponent. Lots of good uh, counters when they needed them. And uh, just need to get into some more threats uh, more quickly uh, as the match kind of goes on. So really happy with what we have so far, though. Let's see what we can do in game three. Hitting submit. Um, an okay keep. Kind of one hand, one hander here. But we're going to go with the mulligan. And uh, yeah. Three lands and a Sarkin on ceiling off the top with a Drover the Mighty in hand and Steel Leaf Champion. Opponent's turn here. Would love a Steel Leaf Champion on turn three if we can get it, uh, but really kind of uh, precarious there with the Drover the Mighty play, trying to make sure that Drover can last a turn. Uh, but opponent does, of course, have Fatal Push opening hand, so we don't see a Steel Leaf on turn three like we would like. Um, which is fine. We still have a, uh, hopefully a turn three or four, actually turn four here. Can go Sarkin's Unsealing, trying to get some counters out of their hand. We don't see a counter, so Sarkin's Unsealing does hit the battlefield, but Forsake the Worldly is a card brought in from their sideboard where they get rid of the uh, Sarkin's Unsealing ceiling for us. Psychic Corrosion early in the match here. Uh, we go Steel Leaf Champion to get around any kind of counters on that turn and uh, pass turn back. Psychic Corrosion milling us here, so we really are at a, uh, cl a clock here where we need to try and get in as much damage as we can before opponent can uh, deal us lethal damage. Going for a rootbound crag off the top, knowing we have demanding dragon in our hand, hitting in for five, dropping them down to 15. Again, that drawing is milling us a little bit, so got rid of Gigantosaurus and Steel Leaf Champion there. We're gonna go demanding dragon and see if they have any kind of counters. An opponent does have a disallow, so that's fine. Hit another commune with dinosaurs. We're gonna hunt for a big creature here. Registor Alpha is fantastic for us. Getting in for five. We bottomed a Banefire there, so could have been a great card to end the match as well. But Re Registor Alpha, if we do get that able to, or we, we are able to get that on the battlefield, we can win the match pretty quickly. Getting in for eight points of damage the following turn. Opponent going with another Psychic Corrosion. Carnage Tyrant off the top for us. Registor Alpha coming in. Hoping it doesn't get countered. It doesn't get countered. We get in for eight here. Opponent has us down to 39 cards in hand, so we really have Carnage Tyrant off the top with haste. Can't be countered, but opponent scoops it up regardless. That's going to be the GG there. Nice. Let's get into game three here, and uh, funnily enough, this is not control we're playing up against. <laughs> this is another deck list. Oh, man. Opponent actually knew who I was, uh, and I just kind of didn't look at the chat until the very end of the match, which is funny. So shout out to you, uh, Shoto. Yeah, shout out to you, buddy. Tilted Thicket into a Drover of the Mighty for us. If we had a land off the top, we're golden. Uh, but if not, we have Steel Leaf Champion forever, so I think we're fine with that. Opponent probably thinking about an Abrade here. Yep, there's an Abrade off the Drover of the Mighty. Uh, kind of slowing us down, so we do need to hit a third land to make sure we're kind of good to go. Hit a Treasure Map, we don't hit a third land, so we decide to just attack in with a Steel Leaf Champion. If opponent doesn't have removal for the cha the uh, champion, we're probably okay, uh, because champion can be lethal by itself. A lot of damage that can be uh, basically unblockable. Crocodile of the Crossing hitting in for four here, um, so not bad at all. Another Register Alpha, so we're kind of uh, in need of land really badly, but kind of playing the match out here because, again, they're at 10, we're at 16. We still win on the damage race. Uh, four cards in opponent's hand here. Top decking into a land finally. And attacking out here, going to be killed by the cro Crocodile, uh, but playing out a second Steel Leaf Champion because we can, and passing turn back to the opponent. Would really love some more mana, basically two more mana. <laughs> Three more mana, honestly, uh, for those Carnage Tyrants off the top, but you know how it is. Sarkin's unsealing from our opponent, so this is kind of a mirror match situation. 
Got a red mana here and getting in for five. Very nice. Dropping our opponent down to five and uh, still leave champion off the top as well. Or from our hand as well. Hunting for something and opponent needs a removal spell, needs something. Hour of Devastation would also be okay. But I feel like opponent doesn't have anything. They go with the GG and that is it for game one. Let's get into game two here in the sideboard. Um, so really for us, we're taking out the Riptar Raptor, bringing in Vine Mare. That's very, very good against the Sarkin's Unsealing matchup. Against Hexproof, if they don't have something like Detection Tower where they can get around the Hexproof, they really just can't deal with it. So, bringing that in and we're going into game two here to see what we can do. Yeah, he says Terran right there in the side, and I just completely don't even see it in the sideboard, in the chat, and just uh, Mulligan there. Land off the top. Perfectly fine here. Commune with Dinosaurs can help us get, help, hopefully help us get into uh, a good threat. Going for Llanowar Elf on turn one and passing turn, hoping that they don't have a burn spell for the Llanowar Elf. Tap land, gonna go for a Cumin with Dinosaurs, grabbing either Carnage Tarrant or a Rootbound Crag, go for the Crag instead, and hit in for one. Go for the Rootbound Crag because of the Sarkin's Unsealing on turn three, as long as the uh, Llanowar Elf does not get killed. Uh, but we also hit a Seal Leaf Champion, so we're gonna go Sarkin's Unsealing first, just to get that online as soon as possible, and pass turn back to opponent. Uh, four cards in hand going for a Sark in the ceiling of their own. Very nice. Uh, we're going to go Gigantosaurus and just do four damage to everything and then uh, have a 10 10 on the battlefield. So we're basically racing, but uh, they don't have any kind of removal for that 10 10 there. They basically just have blockers forever. And um, that's exactly what they're going to do here. Now, the four damage does hit us, taking us down to 16. Um, but they have a 4-3 and a 1-1, one, one, so nothing that really hurts the Gigantosaurus at all. Gonna go Steel Leaf Champion, do four more points to the face, dropping them down to 11, and then just attacking in for 10 here. Blocking with the 1-1, one, one, no problem at all. And uh, getting out a Drover of the Mighty on the instep there, our main phase 2 rather. Land for opponent. Uh, Glorybringer coming off the top, so that can shoot down the Steel Leaf Champion. That does slow us down a little bit, and Glorybringer can kill the Drover of the Mighty as well, making sure they can get in 8 points of damage, but they decide to block instead here. A bit of a mistake, I feel like. Um, so Banefire off the top here is a huge threat. I go Banefire for 4, uh, 5, and kill the uh, Glorybringer, then get in for 10 and 3. So block the 10-10, take 3, go to 8. Very, very nice. Again, Banefire can be any target, and that's going to be the GG there. Nice. All right, guys, that is the deck tech. Hope you did like it. Like it if you like it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And share this video around with your friends. Share the channel around with your friends. Would love to see this channel grow. I appreciate you guys a ton. And uh, if you have a deck you want me to cover in the future, just put it in the comments down below. Would love to hear what you have to say. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. I love you all. And if you want to catch me streaming, you can catch me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash TerranQuals. And that will be in the comments down below as well. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. I love you all, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome MTG content just like this. And make sure to tap the bell icon to be notified whenever a video is made live. If you want to keep watching content, here are two more videos for you. This video and many others are sponsored by MTGO Traders and Cape Fear Games. Buy and sell digital singles to build your online collection today with MTGO Traders, and get your paper singles, accessories, and much more from Cape Fear Games. Whatever your magic needs, both places have you covered.